What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out WWE release talent, CM Punk banned from mentioning AEW, Punk versus Austin rumors and other wrestling news. Man, uh, should be a good video, uh, video brought to us by WrestleMania. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already, but this should be very interesting. I wanna see what's going on here, man. But uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this bad boy. Guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with some more news. Join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including uh, Stone Cold versus CM Punk happening. Why mm. Punk can't talk about AEW on WWE programming. WWE releases a talent and more to come. WWE confirms Roman Reigns' next appearances. Okay. Roman Reigns' potential Rumble opponents. Matt Hardy frustrated by AEW creative. No Nine surprise. Throw shade at Ronda Rousey. Uh oh. Rick Flair caused AEW embarrassment and much more. Be sure to subscribe. And oh, it's a lot of news. A lot of news. Should be an interesting one. Lists. Also, check out our new website, WrestleMania.com. And now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. See what's going down here. Our first story looks at a rumor as WWE officials want CM Punk vs. Stone Cold Steve Austin mm. to happen. At the top of today's news is a rumor that some WWE higher-ups are hoping that a dream match between Punk and Stone Cold Steve Austin could happen. Now that Punk has returned to WWE, fans are already salivating at the chance of seeing a major match such as Punk vs. Seth Rollins or Punk mm -hmm. vs. Roman Reigns. However, a new report suggests that they could have something even bigger. Fightful Select is reporting that some WWE officials are lobbying for a Punk vs. Austin match. Mm. As of now, we're told many in WWE are hopeful and even optimistic that the match could finally be put together. One source in the company had indicated that many ideas have already been floated between CM Punk and WWE. We've not heard how far along in talks, planning or pitches that is, but that if it all went well, the ideal scenario would see Punk flying to Austin to go over ideas. However, don't get ready to buy tickets just yet. As the report notes, one source indicated that while that is the ideal scenario, there's a lot to get through first. Those close to Austin say they've never heard him mention any personal issues that the two would need to get over and mm -hmm. actually indicated that they drop messages to each other a couple of times a year or so. Oh, okay. On paper, there's no reason to believe a Punk vs. Austin match can't happen as Steve Austin more than showed he's capable of working a 10 minute plus match when he battled Kevin Owens at yeah. WrestleMania 39. However, Austin would need to get time into in-ring shape. He'd also have to work around his schedule, which includes his various business enterprises and TV appearances. Uh -huh. Austin is going to be rushed into anything just because the WWE smells a huge box office hit. Fortunately, the increase in number of stadium shows and shows at international venues means that WWE has many choices for booking a match this big besides WrestleMania. As a matter of fact, the WWE may have already made so many big matches planned for Mania that it might want to save this for another show such as SummerSlam or one of its Saudi Arabia events. However, as yeah. we pointed out, it's unknown if Punk will work in Saudi Arabia. Next up, Shawn Michaels a, is advised. That's a very interesting match. Um, they've had their interactions before in the past. And um, I'm be honest with you. I would not trip. I definitely would not trip if that was to happen. I, do, I don't think they need to rush it. I think they kind of have an idea what they're going to do with WrestleMania coming forward. So I do believe if they were to do this, it would probably fit better at another show maybe SummerSlam would probably be the better fit because this is a box office match but you know even if it wasn't at SummerSlam it could be at an overseas show because you know that that would be crazy too so I don't know I don't know where they would put this but I would not be opposed to it I, I wouldn't I'm, I'm not even gonna sit up here and, and lie and say I would no I think that would be very entertaining the promos they could do back and forth would be must see TV so I don't know we we can see if that if that that does happen, uh, once again, I am still on the uh, side of don't rush this. If it plays out the way it's supposed to play out and the cards line up and scheduling makes sense, then go for it. If the opportunity is there, but don't rush it because I don't think this is a match that people I know people would love to see it, but I know people wouldn't trip if it doesn't happen because it's one of those type of things. It's not a must happen match. It's more or less a, a dream match that, you know, people and fans would be uh, very uh, excited to see. So they take their time with it. I'm all for it. Vice for CM Punk. There's plenty of talk of CM Punk's return, including comments from those in the wrestling industry. One such person is Shawn Michaels. 
Eichels, who recently chatted with Peter Rosenberg about Punk's return, noting he and Punk have some similarities. Mm -hmm. I understand business, and also, look, I also wasn't the most popular guy to people, uh -huh. but I was really good at my job, and I feel that's one of the reasons I've had one here at the WWE for uh -huh. almost 40 years. Because again, I'm dependable, and I'm good at my job. And I think that if you're that, there's always an opportunity here. Facts. Michaels, who currently serves as the WWE Senior Vice President of Talent Development Creative, opened up about Punk's return, saying, I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the company. I'm happy for the WWE fan base, the WWE universe. Stories like this are always fantastic, even if they're controversial. Mm -hmm. That's part of what makes them fantastic. Facts. I expect to hear more comments from people in and outside the WWE. AEW announcer and WWE Hall of Famer Jim Ross recently commented on Punk's return saying it was a great booking and good judgment by Paul Levesque aka Triple H a perfect end to the show next up what and it's funny coming from him he said it like I wasn't the most liked back then I wasn't and people some people may not even remember but Shawn Michaels bro people were wanting to fight him all the time like, this wasn't what it is now that times have changed. But back then, no, people were ready to fight him. Like, he's been punched before for, you know, certain things that he didn't said and or done. And guess what? He would go out there and still give you a, a classic because he was that damn good and he knew it. Obviously, everything else that was affecting him too, you know, the outside, uh, you know, drugs and stuff like that and and the things he was dealing with his personal demons but at the end of the day he knew that he was one of the best in the ring vince knew that he was one of the best in the ring the people in the back that hated him knew he was one of the best in the ring so i'm not excusing that you know that behavior but if there's anybody that can understand being able to try to change and be a better person and and, and benefit the company and uh overall it's hpk sean michaels like punk can't talk about aew and wwe programming now if you're waiting for cm punk to dish the dirt on his run in aew mm -mm. Well, you're gonna be disappointed as dave Meltzer is reporting for those wondering or disappointed that punk said nothing about aew it's because both he and others have signed several ndas non-disclosure agreements regarding talking publicly about the other mm -hmm. there's already speculation about this as tony khan was recently asked about punk's aew exit and replied I can't talk about that. And not to dodge your duck your question, it's just not something I can legally talk about. Uh -huh. Are you guys disappointed that Punk can't talk about AEW on WWE? Let us know in the comments down below. Not disappointed at all. He doesn't need to talk about it. He don't. That's why he alluded to it. You know what I'm saying? He he bet he definitely alluded to it. I'm I'm here. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to, you know, make money. He alluded to it. You know, the real reference that, you know, people have said all friends, uh, all friends wrestling and as AEW is all friends wrestling. Everybody's cool with each other. People have gotten hired because they're friends with each other. So that was that was the dig. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make money. But he did not really say it and he doesn't have to say it, nor does he need to say it, because at the end of the day, it, it's in the past now. It's in the past now. Those who knew where he was knew where he was. Those who didn't. You can look it up. You know, it, it does no good for both companies to be sending jabs at each other about the CM Punk situation because it doesn't do anything. It creates a cheap pop, ooh, and all, but that's it. It doesn't do anything. So I'm honestly cool with him not mentioning AEW because he doesn't need to. He's in WWE, needs to focus on what's going on in said company that he's in. Next up, WWE releases a talent with more to come. Now, uh -oh. it's unfortunately bad news as NXT backstage interviewer Mackenzie Mitchell, who joined in 2019, has been let go from the company. Oh, she damn. confirmed on X saying, Today I was released by WWE. I met my husband, moved across country from Connecticut to Florida for NXT, a place I've always considered home, and met friends that became like family. I've always said and firmly believe in when one door closes, another opens. Oh, damn. Now, unfortunately, there may be more bad news as Brandon Thurston is reporting that there were mass layoffs today at WWE company uh -oh. headquarters. Right now, it's unknown how many people have been let go, but there were mass firings earlier this year when WWE yeah. merged with Endeavor. Of course, we'll continue this story as it unfolds. Damn. Next up, WWE confirms Roman Reigns' next appearances. Roman Reigns' next appearances on WWE TV have been confirmed. Roman, who's been off TV since defeating LA Knight at Crown Jewel, will be back sooner than some fans expected. WWE's X account noted, just announced, tickets on sale now okay. to acknowledge your tribal chief Roman Reigns live at SmackDown. 
on the 15th December, Green Bay, Wisconsin. On 5th January, Vancouver, BC. And 19th January, oh, Atlanta, damn. Georgia. <laughs> and this is good news out. for fans of the Tribal Chief who were concerned he might not appear until 2024. While it was believed that Roman would be back in time to promote the 27th January's Royal Rumble, there was speculation that he was done for 2023. This seemed reasonable since Reigns worked a very limited schedule. With Randy Orton making it clear that he has some receipts for the bloodline, it seems likely that Roman and Randy will meet in the near future, perhaps I hope even so. as early as 15th December SmackDown. Whether I this hope leads so. to a match involving Randy and Roman remains to be seen. Next up, and I, I do think that's going to be very interesting because I want to see if he's going to say anything about CM Punk. I want to see if he's going to say anything about uh Randy Orton. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting what he says and how his demeanor will be. I wish it was more frequent, but that's it. I think we're going to only get one more date for 2023 and then uh, we'll get some more dates uh, going into uh, the new year. Um, but uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what he has to say. What's his thoughts and opinions on everything that's transpired since he's been gone? Roman Reigns' potential Rumble opponents. Okay, Speaking okay. Speaking of Roman's potential opponents for the Rumble, Dave Meltzer is weighing in on this week's Observer. Right now, or at least early in the week, it wasn't locked in who that would be with. A few names have been considered, Orton being one of them. Yeah. Orton, Owens, and Knight would on paper seem like the top names, but none are a lock, and Knight was supposed to go in another direction as of last week. As we suggested on our website, it would be foolish to book an Orton vs. Reigns match and have the Viper job out shortly after his return. Mm. While the talk surrounding Roman's possible opponent seems to be on a singles match, they could keep things interesting by booking a tag match. Next up, Dub They could. I, I know, and I, I get what he's saying. That does make sense. If he if Randy Orton does come back just to lose, it'd be like, damn. I, I wouldn't have a problem with them having that match um, at the Royal Rumble. I don't know. I mean, that does make a very, very good point. You don't want him to come back and then he immediately loses to the tribal chief. And that's one person, another person Roman can put uh, <laughs> on his notch of people he's beaten for the championship. Um, I don't know. That's that's really a tough one. That's a that's really a tough one. I mean, maybe you could do something for the elimination chamber. I don't know. That's that's a tough one, y'all. Who do y'all think should be his opponent if he has one at the Royal Rumble? Y'all let me know because... It's a tough one. I mean, the on paper, the easiest one that makes sense, and since Randy is trying to go after the bloodline or whatnot, would be Randy Orton. So I don't know. We'll see where they go. But, you know, y'all let me know down below as well. Who do y'all think um, will be um, uh, Roman's opponent potentially at uh, next year's Royal Rumble? WWE holding off on a Roman versus Punk match? Is the WWE going to take its time with Roman Reigns versus CM Punk? While the match seems like a foregone conclusion, Meltzer is reporting, For right now, the plan is to take a lot of time before getting there. The feeling right now is that it will be gigantic at the time mm -hmm. they choose to get there. Whether it's results in Heyman leaving Reigns for Punk and Punk going heel and Reigns face, uh -huh. which was the speculation we got, there are multiple different ways to approach that. Uh -huh. The key is to peak it timing-wise, although it will probably work big whenever it happens, but there are risks. One major star who saw the situation said that they'd better get there within six months because of the injury risk or uncertainty with Punk. Punk's history of injuries might lead to the WWE running the program sooner rather than later. When do you think they should actually book this match? Let us know in the comments down below. I feel like they should book this match. Roman has to drop the title first. That's the only way this works. Because you want to create this unpredictability. Roman drops the title at Mania. You could do it like that. And then, if anything, I would have uh, CM Punk and, and Roman Reigns happen at next year's SummerSlam. And you could do a turn. You could have a situation where Paul Heyman sees the ship is sinking because Roman is not the champ anymore. He sees CM Punk is on the rise or whatnot. And you could have a situation where Paul Heyman ultimately leaves Roman Reigns and goes back with CM Punk. You could do that. And what you could do is have CM Punk be the champ. If you choose to do that, if you have CM Punk win at next year's uh, Mania and beat Seth Rollins, now he's the champ. Roman doesn't have a championship. He hasn't won that championship. You can set up something. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? You can. There's a way you can do it, but I would at least do it at SummerSlam. That's plenty of time from now to kind of build towards that. If you do it maybe a little bit after SummerSlam, maybe... But sometime next year would be the preferable time to set that up. 
but it has to be after Roman loses. If, if Roman retains, CM Punk's not beating him. So you want to at least get that some that that era of like unpredictability because you don't know who can win and lose now that Roman has already lost. So I would do that. Next up, Matt Hardy frustrated by AEW Creative. Is Matt Hardy growing tired with how he and his brother Jeff are being booked? Matt discussed this on his Extreme Life of Matt Hardy podcast saying, I mean, just creatively, like just the way we've been utilized like the last four months. It's been very frustrating. We've been very patient, but there's been a lot of frustration. Things we've done and kind of how we've been utilized in some ways. Hardy discussed he and Jeff embracing personas as harder edged heels, something he says they've never done. What do you guys think of the way the Hardys have been booked in AEW? Let us know in the comments down below. I can't really give no type of comment on it because I haven't been watching the Hardys that much in AEW. So y'all let me know how do y'all feel like they've been booked. Apparently, Matt Hardy hasn't been liking it. And I think just in general, a lot of the people they have uh, on AEW television has been misbooked. They, they've either missed the point where that person had the opportunity to really uh, get over even more. Or they were over and then they kind of lost steam because of the booking. So y'all let me know how y'all feel about the Hardys and how they've been booked as of late. Because I hadn't really been watching their matches or storylines, to be honest. So I don't want to give uh, an opinion that I can't really accurately depict. Below. Next up, Nia Jax throws shade at Ronda Rousey. Nia Jax recently threw shade at Rousey in an interview leading to fans wondering whether Jax is talking trash or there's something more to our comments. Jax, who's been enjoying a strong push since her return to WWE this September, recently spoke with Albany area radio station 105.7 and had this to say about her former tag team partner and occasional foe Shayna Baszler. She is a great expert at her judo moves. She's a former UFC fighter. She did take out Ronda Rousey. Rousey just got sent to a whole other company lesser than us. Damn. Shayna does get credit for that. Being so close to her and knowing her every move, I definitely have some good counters. I'm a lot stronger than her. I'm a lot more powerful. I think I'll be okay. Now is Jax just talking trash as some WWE superstars are known to do when a colleague leaves WWE or is there something more personal to our comments? This wouldn't be the first time fans question whether Jax has a legitimate heat with Ronda Rousey. You may recall an interview Jax gave that some believe referenced Rousey's first run in WWE. As noted by comicbook.com, Jax who feuded with Rousey during a run with the company caused a stir a few weeks when she talked about how she had to go to WWE officials and stand up for Alexa Bliss after she'd been repeatedly injured by an unnamed wrestler. Given Bliss's concussion history, it wasn't hard to make the connection that she was talking about Rousey. Hmm. Do you think Jax is staying in character or could there be some legit heat between her and Rousey? Let us know in the comments down below. I think she's more so, more or less staying in character. I think that's really what it is with a little bit of, you know, spiciness to it. But I think more or less she's just staying in character because she was talking about Shayna. Like, I respect Shayna for, you know, taking her out. You know what I'm saying? So I think maybe to set up something with her and Shayna going forward. Um, but I wouldn't read too much into it because at the end of the day, you know, they in separate companies. Nothing's really about to happen. So I'm just leave that where it is. <laughs> and finally, Ric Flair caused AEW embarrassment. Now, in case you missed it, Slick Rick came under fire on social media after he cut a promo on Rampage inviting women from 18 to 28 to stop by his hotel room and leave their boyfriends oh, and husbands behind. No. Anyone familiar with the Nature Boy has heard this promo before, but apparently some fans felt it was oh, disturbing. No. It's because of Flair's septuagenarian status or the allegations that have hung over him concerning the plane ride from hell. Flair tweeted, I'm so tired of hearing all this negativity. I don't need to work and I don't need the money. Can't I simply enjoy being by my dear friend Sting's side for the next few months without so much hatred? I know I'm old, but that doesn't mean I can't enjoy life. I've earned the right to do whatever I want and exactly what I want to be. I appreciate everything, Tony Khan, but I'm more than willing to walk away if I'm embarrassing you and your company. All uh. I can say is I'm sorry. Both Jericho and Stone Cold actually went to the defense of Ric Flair. Should Ric Flair walk away from AEW? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more. I, I think Rick is so, sometimes he's stuck in that old school mind. Back then, him getting away with saying that type of stuff probably works. But considering, one, how old he is, two, the allegations and stuff that he's been dealing with, and that's public knowledge, I think I would have stayed away from saying that type of stuff. And it's just a different time period now. It it, it comes off a little bit creepy. Back then, it was the play a move to say that. we it, It's Ric Flair. He was always about that life. You know what I'm saying? But now, I, if anything, I would have just been like, hey, I don't, I don't know, Rick. I don't think you should say that, per se. So, 
I don't know. I'm not going to sit up here and say he shouldn't do it or shouldn't be in AEW. Hey, man, I, who am I to tell you what to do with your life? I know some people are going to be like, no, he needs to walk away from the company. He's embarrassing the company. That's their opinion. Me personally, I, I wouldn't say some of the stuff he said, but at the same time, I'm not going to sit up here and be like, oh, he needs to walk away. Nah, I don't, I don't think he needs to wrestle. That, no. He does not need to wrestle. That he needs to walk away from, for sure. But being on the show, supporting his friend, being around his friends, me personally, I don't think that's a problem. That's just my personal opinion. So comment down below. Let me know how y'all feel about some of the news that you heard on this particular video. Give your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still here on the speed of YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.